In this video, I'm going to get into the timing cover of my T140V Bonneville Desert Sled Resta Mod project. To get into there, I'm going to have to remove the points plate and the advanced retard and the, uh, the cam that runs it all. I think it needs a bit of a pull on it. I'm going to take off the uh, oil pressure switch and I'm going to take off the oil lines. And then we'll get a look at the oil pump and uh, all the cogs that sort the cams out. Last time, you may remember, I stripped out the gearbox. Got a couple of parts I need to replace in the gearbox. One, the main shaft, which if you've been following along, you'll know I've had problems with, but also the inner plate that goes on. Using the part number, which I took it off to find, I find two sort of multiple, I'll say, not just two, different versions of plate. One, it actually is for the four speed box and one for the five speed box. So I'm a bit confused about that. I definitely know I need a five speed box one. So I'll put my box of gearbox parts to one side to be worried about another day. Worth having a quick look because a lot of uh, Bonnevilles nowadays either came with electronic ignition or have had them swapped in. So it has two sets of points, one of them floating on a back plate and one on a back plate where they're connected directly to. You set the one on the back plate first and then you set the floating one so that it opens the points at the appropriate time. Now, I think basically the whole plate is only held on by these elongated bolts come screws come I don't know what quite what they're called so that you can put the cover on I might have to undo that one as well that that holds the cam and the advanced retard mechanism that's behind here so I'll perhaps just have a quick go at undoing that one which I'll need to hold the engine steady and then we'll undo them and it should just pull off it's a bit naughty to use uh, this gun but I'm sure that shouldn't be too much of a problem let's hope it doesn't hurt me Straight off. Now these two, it's a quarter inch. And that's the plate out. Now the wires, I'll have a grommet that's uh, onto it, so I need to think about that. I'll just put this to one side for the moment. From recollection, this is on a taper. So basically you need to get something to catch in the threads, and hopefully quite a few. And then something like a slide hammer to... We're not getting there yet, might need to warm it up a little bit. Let's give it a little bit of warmth. Oh, perhaps I need something a little bit heavier on there. The advanced retired unit has given me a little bit more of a problem than I expected. Worked out what the special tool was, which has a probe that pushes onto the end of the uh, camshaft. And I tried heating it up a little bit and winding it out with this uh, bolt here and <laughs> the bolt snapped. How annoying is that? But to be fair, it's a stainless steel one. So what I'm going to do is uh, I heated it up. I managed to get the bolts thre unthreaded to come back out. So now I'm going to take it out, see if my uh, little probe thing's done any good, which uh, it may have crushed or something. Maybe the metal wasn't strong enough. And I'll find a better bolt and we'll give it another go. Use a magnet to pull it out. I can't see why. Maybe it's just not long enough. Maybe I'll get a longer one and a better bolt and give that a try. Having heated it up a bit might be a good idea to just try this slide hammer again. Just on the off chance. Let's hope I don't catch my fingers this time. Push. 
normally they just come out well, that didn't work so big hammer let's see ha that did it's literally only held on by a bit of a taper. I pulled out a previous one just to convince myself as well. And it's little things like this. I thought, here we go again. I've got another thing stuck that's going to be a problem, especially when that bolt snapped. Anyway, it's come out now. I've put more heat into that and broke it, you know, but not to worry. It's exactly the same as the one I've got in the bag. So if I do decide to go with points, I um, should be OK. Uh, but I am thinking of electronic ignition. The heat has uh, damaged the wiring to this, but I can always fix the wiring. <sighs> right, let's get this plate off. I think I'll just snip these wires. They're so badly damaged, I'm not going to reuse them. I might reuse the plate. So these are 3 sixteenths. I've got a nice uh, socket for them. I'll give them each a tap. And I think they should be okay, so I'll just loosen them first. Yeah, that's that one. In fact, I might just try without a tap. Yeah. That's a bit more of a nuisance. Okay. They all appear to be okay. What I'll do is this I'm taking them out, I'll just check that the threads feel all right and I bang them in the bag. This one felt a little bit sticky coming out, but I'll have a look when I've taken the place off. The rest of them seemed fine. A little bit of a tap and it should be loose. I can see the sealant that someone's put on here in the past that's really causing me most of the issue, I think. You hear the noise change? I think that means it's giving up. I get a hollow sound. <laughs> he says. No, it's that cable. <laughs> there we go. I've just dug the big lug of sealant that was around here to stop the oil coming out for this wire. So I can pull that through now. And that's why that was a, a bit stiff. If you haven't seen inside the timing chest before, it's quite interesting. There's the little taper that the uh, advanced retired unit was into. And there is a little notch at the top so that it's in the right place. That was the other one. So that's the uh, exhaust camshaft drive. That's the inlet camshaft drive. There's a, an idler gear in the middle and there's the crankshaft pinion at the bottom. The oil pump over here, the oil pressure uh, release valve here and the in and outlet for the oil is here. I'm going to take these two off. I'm not going to strip this bit out yet, but uh, it looks all right. I'm just a bit intrigued why it's got a B written on there and what might be an A or a V or something written on there. But you can see it says A there and a dot. <laughs> and on this one, it's got B and a dot. And you can see the dots for timing on these. These require special pullers to take the uh, cogs off. This one requires a very special puller to take the cogs off. This just unscrews and comes off. It's fairly simple. The oil feed here is held on by one 716 nut onto a stud. So let's just uh, 
get it on there nicely yep and I want to go that way so oh nicely that's the uh, nut off and the washer and a bit of jiggling and this should there we go come loose and fall down you have to make sure you seal this well the intention is to try and take this off in one but you've got to take this cap off because it's a slightly bigger one it is 15 16 so let's just see oh oh it's taking the lock anyway not to worry might get a little bit of oil out of here so i'll put uh, something underneath to catch it might not <laughs> didn't that's the timing chest exposed and next time what i'll do is i'll take off the oil pump and hopefully strip off the cogs for the cams and the crankshaft pinion why not subscribe come with us next time hopefully we don't have as much fun as we did getting the uh, advanced retired unit off um, and once I've got that stripped out, won't be long, I'll be splitting the cases. It's getting quite exciting this, isn't it?